Hi, thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your Tree Shelf. I have got a lot, a lot, a lot of library books out at the moment and it's making me feel a little bit swamped. And so I thought I'll go through them to try and work out if there's any that I'm not particularly keen on anymore or any that you guys can tell me that they're wonderful and I must read them or conversely any that you think weren't that good and you think it would be fine to, to return them back to the library. So I don't know um, when I started getting quite so many books out of library, how it got so out of control. I think that it's just because of booktube. Sometimes I think um, while I'm watching booktube, I think, oh, that sounds really good. I'll see if they've got it at the library and then I'll order it into my local branch. And um, the reason that it bothers me is one, because I end up renewing some of them so many times and two because I really want to reduce the size of my TBR and whilst the library books are all ones that I'm really keen to read and I might have bought them had it not been for getting them from the library um, it's not helping me reduce my TBR that much like some months I might read 10 or 12 books and it might reduce my TBR by like three or something so without further ado I'm going to tell you the books and then you can give me some feedback on what your thoughts are to stay or to go the first book is one that I got after, um, I heard about it a lot, but I got it after David from, um, so Lauren from the books is a fiancé, David read this book and he loved it so much, he was so enthousi enthusiastic about it that I got it out from the library. That is The Appeal by Janice Hallett. I know that a lot of people have read this and really liked it. This is a, a crime book, but I think it's probably kind of cosy crime, maybe? Um, so someone's been murdered and um, a group of, or a couple of law students are assigned the case by a QC um, to try and work out what's happened. So it says one murder, 15 suspects, can you uncover the truth? But I think it's all told in sort of documents and emails and things like that. So I think it'd be quite quick to read and it's supposed to be like really, really gripping. So that's the first one. The second one is one that I got out very recently because it's the second in a series that I, and I really enjoyed the first one. And this is um, the second in the Paper and Heart Society series by Lucy Parry. And this one's called Read with Pride. So the first one um, was just called the Paper and Heart Society. And I loved that book. I read it in Cornwall um, when I was on holiday this year. It was such a joyful book about um, a book club for people who have been sort of labelled as misfits a little bit and this focuses on a different character this time from the same book group so I'm really I really definitely want to read this one just because I love the first one so much and it would be nice for me to actually make progress with series rather than start more series and not progress with them. The third book is one that I saw Jen Campbell recommend and several of these are actually recommendations from Jen Campbell. So this is the first one and this is a book in translation. So this is The Family Clause by Jonas Hansen Kamiri and this is translated by Alice Menzies from Swedish. And um, so this is about a family. So the dad and his grown up children, the dad um, is has moved abroad from Stockholm but he's come back to Stockholm to see his children so his daughter's having a baby with uh the wrong man and the son is a failure and his wife has deserted them and it's basically 10 days of them all together and trying to um just be, be together for 10 days and all of the things that kind of unravel and unfold in that sort of 10 day period where they're all staying together. And I think that sounds really good. I quite I like sort of family dramas and I like things that are set in quite sort of um, close quarters like that where you, I'm guessing, will get quite a lot of detail about the time that they're together. So that one really appeals. The next one is another recommendation from Jen. I'm sure I could read this in one sitting because it's a graphic novel and this is called Hello Mum by Polly Dunbar. So this is um, a, a, graphic no a graphic novel about motherhood and some, I don't know, yeah, there's a few words, but mainly pictures. And um, I think that I'll be very much be able to um, relate to this, having two young children myself. And um, I just, yeah, I think it just sounds... Sounds just like it will be something that I'm into and that um, I can relate to. So I am looking forward to that. And um, yeah, I, could, I'm, I know I could just read this in one sitting. So that one I could read and return to the library quite easily. 
The next two are ones which are the book club choices for our work book club for November and December. So these ones will be read soon and given back to the library. So um, the first one, which is for the 6th of November, this is The Madness of Grief by Reverend Richard Coles. So this is a non-fiction book and um, Richard Coles, is he's been on Strictly, he's... Um, a TV vicar <laughs> and um, probably known to a lot of people in the UK and his partner died um, in 2019 I think from alcoholism but it was a surprise and um, basically it's his uh, memoir about about grief and two of my friends in book club have read it so far and they said it's good but it is pretty sad um, but I think they said it's quite a quick read as well it's not a very long book so that's the tr that's one that I'm definitely going to be reading as is the December choice which is The Librarian by Sally Vickers just going to have a sip of tea in a detour I just tidied out my tea cupboard and um, found a loose tea bag with um, it looked like a tea pigs or something like that tea, tea bag but I wasn't sure what flavour it was and I think it's like a sort of peachy mango one but it's nice that was a tea lucky dip <laughs> so this one is about a lady called um sylvia blackwell it's set in 1958 and she takes a job as a children's librarian in a rundown town she's really enthusiastic about getting children passionate about reading and um she starts having uh, an affair with the local married gp and she befriends his daughter um and she befriends a few other people in the village but it says that it ignites she ignites prejudices in the town and threatens the existence of her job um with dramatic consequences for them all so i've never read sally vickers i've got another one of her books but i've never read her before so that will be read in december the next one i picked up on a whim it's again one i've heard of before but i have never read it and this is a non-fiction this is the diary of a bookseller by sean blythell so sean Bythel, sorry. Um, Sean is a bookseller in Scotland and um, he lives in a town where um, I think there's just I think there's loads of bookshops in the town that he lives in, I think. Um, but anyhow, so he's basically written about um, anecdotes of of day to day life in the bookshop, from funny things customers say to how much money he took to how many orders he took and all that kind of thing. And I know this will be good. It's just like, it's not, for some reason, it's not like jumping out as, as a priority to me off this shelf. So there's a quote on the back which says, An elderly customer told me that her book club's next book was Dracula, but she couldn't remember what he'd written. So stuff like that, which will be funny. And um, yeah, the next one, I actually, I ordered this one in and it is on my autumn TBR. So I will be reading it soon. And that is Pandora by Susan Stokes Chapman. So this is a book about, um, it's set in 1799 in London. It's about an antiquity shop where our main character Dora lives with her uncle. Uh, one day a mysterious Greek vase is uh, delivered to the shop and uh, uncle sees this as, or and Dora sees this as a chance to um, promote the shop and... Um, she hires a scholar to do some more work about it and he sees it as a chance to um, uplift his academic career and then I think there's sort of a shock to all of it and um, it's different to what they actually think it is. So I definitely, definitely want to read this one and um, I might, I don't know if I'll read this one next but this is like high up on my list um, and it may well get reserved by someone else so I do need to read that one. The next little stack I've had out for quite a while. This book's had amazing reviews. This is a really small book, Open Water by Caleb Azima Nelson. This was on my potentials for Shorty September, but I didn't get around to it, annoyingly. Um, so this is about two, wi two women? No, this is about a couple, a man and a woman, who meet in Bristol. He's a photographer and she's a dancer. And they fall in love, but it says that fear and hatred could tear them apart and... Um, a love song to black art and thought says Yajiasi. So um, that one, I, I again, I keep saying I definitely want to read. I definitely want to. I do. I just got to um, balance out with my with my other TBR. This one I've had out for absolutely ages. Um, this is Two Boys Kissing by David Levithan. Um 
when I mentioned this for Shorty September, two people said, to, oh, I loved that book again, so I need to just hurry up and read it. So this is about um, Craig and Harry. They're hoping to set the world record for the longest kiss. They're not a couple, but they used to be. Then there's Peter and Neil are a couple. Their kisses are different. Avery and Ryan have only just met and are trying to figure out what happens next. Copper is alone. He's not sure how he... Cooper is alone. He's not sure how he feels. As the marathon progresses, these boys, their friends and family evaluate the changing nature of feelings, behaviour and this crazy thing called love. That sounds really good. Yeah, that sounds really good. The next one is one that I saw discussed by... Um, Louise Savage from Louise Savage Muses and um, I've mentioned this also for my autumn TBR this is The Way of All Flesh by Ambrose Parry who I think is a married couple and this is set in is it Victorian times? 1847 yes Victorian times in Edinburgh we have a medical student Will we have um, the doctor he works for Dr Simpson and we have Sarah Fisher who is Dr Simpson's housemaid and um, she is just as intelligent but she doesn't have the privilege of being a man and basically bodies start to appear and they find themselves in the darkest shadows of Edinburgh's underworld so I think this is about like potentially body snatching and stuff like that because for anatomy teaching and things as well as, you know once um, once the uh, murders happen so yeah that sounds really good like everything that I've just said um I then have A Burst of Light and Other Essays by Audrey Lord, and this was another potential for Shorty September. So this is an essay collection, um, winner of the 1989 American Book Award, and these are, their titles of the essays are um, Sadomasochism, Not About Condemnation, I Am Your Sister, Black Women Organising Across Sexualities, Apartheid USA, Turning the Beat Around, Lesbian Parenting in 1986 and A Burst of Light, Living with Cancer. So again, this is a really short book and I have no excuse why well, I haven't read it yet. I'd re I've wanted to read Aud Audrey Lord for such a long time and um, this is my opportunity to do so. I have an Impulse Borrow, which I got out a couple of months ago, um, which is Antigone Rising by Helen Morales. Um, this is a collection of essays about ancient myths. So it says, um, this is a fresh understanding of the Greek classic myths and it's basically saying how a lot of the time the women were, um, we only hear about the violence and things towards women in these stories and actually there's another side to the stories about sort of the uh, sort of feminist um, retellings of these myths and things. So um, yeah, I am... Um, been looking forward to this because I have become interested in this topic of late. The next one I've had out for absolutely ages, I would say months and months and months, and I got it out because Jen Campbell talks about this book a lot and how amazing it is, but I'm not really a crime reader, so I need to be persuaded, do I go for this or not? So this is the start of the Frida Klein series, this is Blue Monday by Nikki French. The reason I'm a bit reluctant is because this is about a child who gets abducted, and as a mum... I find it like I don't really read I find like if I do read crime I can get into it but it doesn't kind of call me and if there's anything about children getting hurt or taken that's just like horrible to read as a parent and but everybody who's read this series says it's really good um so it's about a five-year-old Matthew Faraday he's abducted and his parents and the police are desperate and they get in touch with um psychotherapist Frida Klein who just might know something and um so yes Frida Klein is the main protagonist throughout the whole series there's eight I believe in this series each named after day of the week and then one more and so I just need to know do I do I do this or not please tell me the next one was an impulse borrow from a few months ago when I was near the um, section where you check out the books at the library. I saw this. It was a complete cover impulse purchase. This is a YA book called After Love by Tanya Byrne. And the premise is that we have a girl called Ash who is in a car accident. And I think she dies in the car accident. And then she gets an invitation from the afterlife to join a clan of fierce girl reapers who take the souls of the city's dead to await their fate. However, she's in love with a girl called Poppy 
am in her real life and she wants to see her again. She's desperate to you and um, she basically says she'll do anything to see her again even if they are dead or alive. The next one was a recommendation from Mercedes and I saw this in the library and got it. It looks like a really good summer read so I'm a bit gutted I didn't read it over the summer. But um, this is Mary Jane by uh, Jessica Anya Blau and this sounds really good. So this is about Mary Jane, she's 14, she sings in the church choir and she's quite, um, she likes listening to musical show tunes and um, she lives with her mum, she likes cooking. This is set in the 1970s in Baltimore and she gets a job looking as a nanny to the doctor's children which her mum thinks is going to be a really respectable job. They then find out when she goes to this house to start the nannying job, it's pretty chaotic in the house. But it's, I think it's quite kind of dirty. They eat a lot of takeaways. And um, she finds out that um, the doctor's a psychiatrist and he's taken in a drug addict rock star and his wife for the summer to try and get him clean. And so this is completely different to um, what she was expecting. And she starts bringing order to their life. But by the end of the summer she is she changed is she still is she still the same person or has she changed them or have they changed her that sounds amazing i'm really looking forward to that one that's going near the top of the pile the next one is by an author that i've read before and really liked and i've had this out for ages this is a non-fiction book and this is somebody to love by alexandra hemmingsley i read running like a girl by her and really enjoyed it um a year and a half ago or so and this is about, so Alexandra is pregnant with her son and when she is pregnant, her husband or partner tells her that he is transitioning to be a woman. And this obviously comes as a massive shock to her and ends their relationship. And it's about their journey as co-parents and um, what it's like for her to have a husband who is transitioning to be a woman while she's pregnant. So that sounds fascinating, especially because it's non-fiction rather than fiction this this stack of books is just collapsing before my eyes we have a book that jen campbell talked about loads and i have had this out for way too long this is a place for us by fatimet farheen mirza i think it was jen's book of the year a few years ago now and i've definitely had her mention it a lot of times i also think sarah jessica parker picked this for her um is it her like is it for her publishing label I'm not sure I think it might be not sure but anyhow um so this book is about an Indian Muslim family and the eldest daughter is getting married and um she has chosen her partner she loves her partner and as the family come back together there's an estranged brother called Amar and it's like, can he be trusted to behave himself after three years away? I think it starts in the present and goes back in time, I believe. And we find out why is that he estranged, what has happened in this family to, to tear the family apart. So again, I do really like a family saga. And I think it might be set in the States, I think. But yeah, so that's that one. Next one that sounds really good. This this one is Snowflake by Louise Nealon. This was recommended by Kira from um, Kira Foster. I will link all these channels um, below. And um, this she recommended this because she really likes Sally Rooney and she said this is similar to Sally Rooney. And um, I was a bit ambivalent about Sally Rooney, but I loved her last bit. And so this is why I hired this one, hired this one, borrowed this one from the library. And so this is about a girl called Debbie White who is living in Dublin on a dairy farm with her mum Maeve and her uncle Billy who lives in a caravan at the bottom of the garden. Billy sounds like an alcoholic or he's drinking a lot anyway. And her mum is writing down dreams which she thinks are her prophecies. And that was just kind of normal life for Debbie but now she's going to Trinity College in Dublin and she is trying to navigate between new friends who seem quite sophisticated and her family un bit starting to unravel where her mum's getting more eccentric, her uncle's drinking more and it's about sort of that um, pull between her family and her friends. So that sounds fab. I told you that was a lot of books, didn't I? The next one is another recommendation from Jen. This is one which the library actually bought for me um, because I asked for it. And this is uh, the Hopkins manuscript by R.C. Sheriff. So this is about Edgar Hopkins, 
who is a retired teacher and he learns that the moon is about to crash into the earth with apocalyptic consequences and he leaves behind a manuscript basically um saying about what um well i think i, I think he might have written the manuscript anyhow um because he sort of writes for literary prizes trying to make a career as a writer and then when there's this apocalypse his manuscript is discovered in the future and to learn what earth was like before that and um this was published in 1939 and um yeah i'm looking forward to that last two so the next one i actually own but i heard that it's good to have a physical copy of because so i've got the an e-copy there's a character list and i think if there's a character list it'll be easier to actually read it in paper rather than on ebook um this is a highly highly acclaimed book this is the fifth season by rk jemison this is the first in the Broken Earth trilogy. This is about where I, I believe there's a fifth season every, um, rarely, and it brings some sort of environmental catastrophe, I think. So on the back it just says, um, this is the way the world ends for the last time. It starts with the Great Red Rip. It starts with the great red rift across the heart of the world's sole continent, spewing ash that blots out the sun. It starts with death with a murdered son and a missing daughter. It starts with betrayal and, a long, and long dormant wounds rise up to fester. This is the stillness, a land long familiar with catastrophe, where the power of the earth is wielded as a weapon and where there is no mercy. It's, it's won so many awards, everybody raves about how amazing this is and so I'm really looking forward to this fantasy and then the very last book is one that i just picked up today i ordered it ages ago and it's just come in and this is um the house of fortune by jesse burton which is the sequel to the miniaturist by jesse burton which i absolutely loved when i read it a few years ago now when it when it came out and um i can't really say what this is about because if you haven't read the miniaturist then this will give spoilers but please read the miniaturist if you haven't because it's so wonderful and um look how beautiful the front cover is i think if i love this as much as i love the miniaturist i may get physical copies of them both because the miniaturist i own on audible and um this one i don't own at all so help as you can see i don't even i haven't even counted how many books that is but as you can see there is way too many library books there so be like um comment in below and tell me if there's one that you're like you have to read this and one that you're like eh, yeah that was okay but not really for me because I need to try and sort this problem out I'm not taking any more books out of the library unless I really really want them um I have got one more coming in on on order but I think I'm quite far down the queue which is good so yeah any help you can give me I'd really appreciate that because I'm drowning in library books <laughs> I hope you have a lovely week and I'll speak to you all soon bye